Grandma's Grandma's kitchen. 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 There's a fiddle tune and a wooden spoon while she's stirring and a singing. There's friends leaving our family land and then the phone's usually ringing. No matter who you are or what you've done, everything's forgiven. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank and ain't it good to be in Grandma's kitchen? Grandma's kitchen. Hello everybody and welcome to Tombs and Wooden Spoons. Mary Janet here and welcome back to another Sunday of baking with me or listening to me or watching me. Whatever you're doing, I'm thankful that you are here. And uh, today, uh, another beautiful day. My God, the fall has been just heavenly. The weather we haven't had any bad weather to speak of but today we're we're making date squares so i'm going to be making them along with you and i'm no i'm it's not something that i'm comfortable with so if i make any mistakes correct me i'm happy with that i made them this week and i already know what i did wrong uh, i'll tell you that in a minute but um uh, Anyway, uh, before we begin, uh, there's a couple of people that I really want to do a shout out to. Number one is my grandson, Oliver, out there in Fort Mac. This week he is turning 16. Happy, happy birthday, Oliver. Hugs to you. I wish I could be there to celebrate with you. Uh, that is uh, my daughter Tammy's youngest son. So uh, they're growing up, aren't they? And uh, I also want to say a really big hello to Mary O'Hanley. Hi, Mary. Mary is in her 90s and she's as spry as can be and she's from Glace Bay and she's with her daughter Donna. They watch weekly and I just get such nice notes and I've sent a couple of big hugs to you, Mary. I hope you got them. And thank you so much for, uh, for watching and listening. Someone said, uh, seniors, especially those who are up, really up there in their senior years, they are our libraries because they have so much knowledge, certainly of baking, and baking in their day was maybe a little different than today. We have more conveniences, but uh, just uh, relish any uh, parents and grandparents that you have and just uh, get all the, the, the little bits of knowledge out of their head that you can get because it's a treasure. And when it's gone, uh, we've lost that library and it's a beautiful thing. So um, anyway, I, uh, th that's, that's all I have to say about any special people out there lots to say later and we actually have a nice musical guest which I'll introduce you to later a very special friend of mine but to get started right away on this um, we're going to wash our hands and seven to 350 okay I'll be right back There now. It's always great to take your paper towel to dry, dry, dry your hands to use when you're baking. So today, I'm, I'm going to do things a little different today. I really like to, you to see actually what we're doing. So I'm going to try to tilt the camera down and say prayer that that will happen so they can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, sometimes you just don't want to be looking just right at this 
face and just kind of getting a little angle on, on the bowl and all of that. But uh, for now, um, I'm going to start with the dates because that's the very first thing that we have to do. And I uh, got this recipe from Sandy Taylor, uh, who lives on the Shore Road here in Port Hood. Uh, I, I had lots of uh, comments about she makes the greatest date squares when she takes them to the museum events that were happening and they don't happen anymore because of COVID. But uh, as well, little tips along the way from Kathleen Boyle and Anne McComb out there in BC. Thank you, Anne. But more on that later. But uh, so, so Sandy, uh, her recipe didn't call quite for this much, but it was so close to the amount of dates that are in this box that I just used the whole box. I don't know if I'm supposed to do that, but I, that's what I did because I'm not going to have any leftover dates in my house. <laughs> so these, this is a 500 gram uh, box of dates that are pitted already and, um, you know, the, the, I think it was 490 some grams of, of dates that the recipe called for. So forgive me, Sandy, I'm doing a couple of little adjustments to your recipe. And uh, so I've just put them all in a bowl and I'm going to chop them up here. And I, I think you're supposed to, well, you are, you're supposed to set it aside and let it cool. But we're not going to have a lot of time to do that today. So um, while I'm mixing the base and the top, um, I'm just going to sit it in a nice cold sink full of water and if it's warm they're getting made that way and Cecil will eat them no matter what and uh, but anyway so I'm going to try to tilt the camera down so that you can actually see my work surface and see what I'm doing and you can hear me I hope so here we go Going to bring you over a little closer. Okay, and so here are all the dates that were in the box. And I just have my cutting board here, and I'm just going to cut each one into a half or three, whatever, probably each one in a half. That's the one thing. That's This is what I was going to confess to you. So I was rushing through that recipe earlier this week so I could take the picture to show you. And I just cooked them all just like this. I never even looked at the little thing in brackets said chopped. I didn't do that. So today we're going to chop the dates. All right. So I'm just going to take a few out here. And I have my pot probably a two quart saucepan and uh, I'm gonna cut each one in half I hope you can see some of them are stuck together I'm just cutting through the whole thing gosh there's a, so many date lovers out there I'm just so amazed at that and I found out something new this week too and I was at my son's last weekend, as you know, and they're eating these Lara bars. And I had a coconut one. Oh my gosh, it was very tasty. Guess what? The main ingredient is in all of the Lara bars is dates. Well, there you go. And next weekend, I am going to be trying my hand at sticky toffee pudding. And guess what the main ingredients? Oh dear, I am frozen. Okay, I'm gonna keep on going. My daughter just tells me that I am frozen, so hopefully it'll come back. And cut all these little dates up. Uh, that's our internet service that we have here. It's just so bad. But the province is working on it. And I guess maybe in a year or so, we might be lucky enough to, uh, to have it back. 
So please send a note. My daughter sent a text there to say that I'm frozen for the moment. Sorry, people. I can't do anything about it. I'm actually using my new phone instead of my computer. And uh, hopefully the sound is okay and you can all hear me okay. So I see some people are saying I'm not frozen there. So I'm going to keep on going, people. It's just the way of the world. If you live in a rural community in rural Nova Scotia, and perhaps it's the same other places too, that's what happens. And of course, you can hear my favorite CD is playing there, Falsha CD, Airs and Waltzes, always available at the Judic Celtic Music Interpretive Center. And I hope that the recipe is now up on, on the site. It's definitely on the website because I put it there myself and I scheduled the post for the recipe to come up. I chose quarter two this time. So you have about 15 minutes before it starts. Uh, another little thing I wanted to mention to you. I know one week there was one kind of a panicked person on there that was wondering why she's just seeing my kitchen, thinking perhaps that I was frozen and whatever. But I don't know if I'm doing the right thing by doing this or not, but I thought I would start around 156 or 157 and just have the camera set on my table or my stove, whatever I'm using at that moment uh, for that day and put a tune on and then everybody can just listen to music and join in and it gives you a time so that when I start, hopefully right at two, everybody that's going to be watching is ready at the same time as I am. And uh, hope you guys don't mind that, that's just the way I do it. And then when we actually post the video to YouTube, and on the website, which is getting updated, it's taking a while. Um, that first little lag of tunes will not be on those videos. We'll just do it that way. It's actually quite warm today. And I know that because these new glasses I got, they're now down at the tip of my nose. <laughs> anyway. And there went my music, but that's all right. I'll turn it back on after. I hope you can all see what I'm doing. I can actually see the comments. I love this. Everybody has different recipes for date squares. I mean, they're probably basically the same. And uh, hi, Anna Timmons. I just saw your name there. Haven't seen you in a long time. Gosh, this is such a great way to, to have people in your life is this is this little thing that happens on the internet, I'm telling you. You think of me cooking these poor dates all whole earlier in the week. I guess it goes to show that uh, I've never made them before. Hope you're baking along with me. If you're not, um, We'll just watch and you can make it when it's your convenience, whenever you can get a chance to do it. Um, and thank you guys all for the wonderful comments last week. I so loved getting away to Halifax last week and spending time with the grandchildren and the children that are in Halifax. It's always 
we're lucky to have them in our lives. And, and we just had so much fun with the songs and it was just a mother's joy for sure. Okay, people. That's it. So, I'm going to take you. First of all, you know what? I have to wash my hands because I'm all sticky. I'll be right back. I'm going to take this to the stove and I'll take you with me. Hi, everybody. There's my face. <laughs> Hi, Judy Curvin and Boudreaux. I'm making them with you. Hi, Anne. She was one. Of, she was the one that made the uh, that won the the little prize that time. Debbie Feniak, Brenda Tuttle. She uses scissors to cut her dates. Well, that's a good idea. And hi, low Poirier. Okay, I gotta put this down or else I'll be reading all day. I love the comments. Okay, see if you can see my stove okay. I should have spent a little more time cleaning it. It's an old stove, hard to make it shiny. Madonna Delaney, hi there. Okay, I'm gonna stop <laughs> or else I'll never, I'll never uh, get this put in the oven. We have our guest is waiting to play. So uh, the recipe. So a 500 gram box of pitted dates, chopped, and a cup of water. So I've pre-measured uh, my water. So I have a cup of water here and a little bit of salt. So I'm just gonna do that. And we're after it's done, um, what am I gonna use here? I guess I'm gonna use a spoon. I'm going to turn that on and it says about six minutes. Well, when I was cooking this on, on Tuesday or Wednesday, when I was cooking it, I said, there's no way in the world that that's going to be made, cooked in six minutes. But you know what? It did and it got right creamy and it was really good. All right, so maybe I'll get my guest to just to place a nice slow background music while we're doing since the other music went off. How about that? And his identity is a secret until. <laughs> but uh, that those those first tunes that I that I selected to play today was Lisa MacArthur. Uh, playing John Moore's Rankin waltzes, and then uh, Scott McMillan, a beautiful guitarist who uh, uh, was playing that second waltz. So that's beautiful. Now I have mine on pretty high, although the burner is on a medium. My propane stove is is quite high, so uh, high as is. Oh, I told you. Okay. My musical guest is Pius McIsaac. I'm going to show him to you. Hi, Pius. Hi, everyone. <laughs> we'll chat with Pius later, but he's going to play some selections in the background while this is this is uh, cooking on the stove. Okay, people. setting the timer for six minutes.
giver, Pius. We need more music. Thank you, Pius. So these are coming along nicely. I'm actually going to turn down the heat, head it on a little bit too high there, but it's coming together really nicely. Another couple of minutes or two or three minutes, it should be fine. Now, I mentioned before Anne McComb out, at the, out there in BC. So she uh, was telling me that instead of... Uh, using water in her dates, she uses orange juice. And then she puts a little bit of lemon and orange rind in with the dates. I mean, you can do that too, if you like. Um, I'm just following the recipe. And, uh, but that's that sounds like really nice. And somebody else, and I forgot the name, but uh, they, um, they actually put like mandarin oranges in with the dates and they said it keeps the squares really moist. So lots of great ideas from you people, you know, great cooks out there, wonderful cooks. So the liquid is pretty much taken up in here. I'm just going to show you that. Okay. I don't want to make it too dry. Nice and moist. I think I'm actually, that's about five minutes. I'm turning the heat off. I'm going to use my handy dandy. Guess where I got this masher? Oh my God, this is the dandiest masher for um, mashed potatoes. Not so great with the turnip. If you, if you haven't cut your turnip or, or cooked your turnip, whatever, but really good. And it actually, I used it the other day for the dates. I mash them. I don't know if I'm supposed to mash them. I'm mashing them though until they're nice and creamy because that's definitely cooked. Turn that timer off. Yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't think this little masher would be great, but it is wonderful. We've had it for many, many, many years. It's awesome. And uh, where's by? Okay, I am just gonna try to rush this along and I'm gonna put it in the sink um, with some cold water and uh, see if it'll cool off enough. I'm gonna put it in, I'm gonna put it in the, the pan anyway. While that's filling up, 
I'm going to get my lemon juice. So it asks for a teaspoon of lemon juice. I'm gonna put a teaspoon of lemon juice in there. I, I have freshly squeezed lemon. And I am going to put some vanilla. Love my vanilla from Watkins. Okay. And this little tip is from Kathleen Boyle. Um, about a teaspoon. And I'm just going to stir that up. There you have it. The dates are done. And I wish I could say they smell delicious. <laughs> but anyway. Hi. Okay. So, we're done with, with that part. And... The rest of it is, the the base and the topping is the same thing. You just divide it up. So let me just clear off my space here. So the base and the top, uh, it's one and three quarter cups of rolled oats. I use the um, quick oats, minute oats. I use Quaker. That's what it, uh, is available to me. But whatever you like to use just regular uh, oats and one and a third cup of flour three quarter cups of butter or basil or whatever you like to use uh, today yeah I'm today I'm actually using basil because that's what I have in and uh, butter is on special this week too so so that's a good thing and some baking soda salt and brown sugar so I'm just gonna put the camera down to the bowl and don't have my blue bowl this week. But uh, it would be a good time to prepare your nine by nine inch pan. So I'm just gonna turn this down a little bit so you can see. There people. So I have my nine by nine pan. And what I like to do when I'm using you can just grease your pan just with your, your with your cooking spray, whatever you have, or grease it with your butter or whatever you want to grease it with. But I'm going to put parchment paper in because it's so much easier to get the stuff out. So I'm just going to do a little spray on every side, and it helps the parchment paper stick in. I've pre-cut two pieces of parchment paper and just let, let it overlap. This is marvelous for when you are uh, going to be taking it out of the pan. It's so much easier. Okay, I'm going to set that aside. And I'm going to take my bowl. Hopefully you can see that okay. All right. So in my bowl, I'm going to put one and three quarter cup of rolled oats. And this is my half cup measure. And my quarter cup measure for one and three quarter cups. All right. And then one and a third cup of flour. One. That's my one cup measure. And my third cup measure. One third cup. So one and a third cup of flour. 
And um, I'm gonna add the baking soda now. I'll add the butter last. So you need one teaspoon of baking soda. Nice, fresh baking soda. And a half a teaspoon of salt. And one cup of brown sugar. I don't usually use my one cup measure in this. Shouldn't have done that. Anyway, I am uh, packing it down there into the thing. So one cup of brown sugar right in there. That's my little sugar softener, if you guys use one of them. So now I'm just gonna mix this with my hands. This is what I love doing best, is using my hands. Perfect, so now we are ready for three quarter cup or whatever you want to use in place of butter. Mine is uh, basil and the, the plant-based brick that I'm using. And uh, this is the one I'm using is salted. And the same with the butter, even though you put salt in. but. You know what? There's not a big difference. I just, if you have unsalted butter in, so be it. Use that. So, you can use your pastry blender if you like. I'm using what God gave me. I'm using my hands. And I love the feel of, uh, of using my hands. And you know when it gets to be the right consistency. So mix that all up. I have this old, old recipe book. I don't know when it came out. I'm saying old, old. It's not that old. It's probably from the, maybe the 70s or something. But it's from over where, in the area where the Gaelic College is in Cape Breton, St. Anne's. And it's just, it's got the old recipes and even um, they have quite the, the, the story there of the, of the, the clergyman who, um, was, it, was it Norman McLeod? Reverend Norman McLeod? I, oh my gosh, I shouldn't even be saying that because I'm scared I'll get the name wrong. But then, then he took his congregation on to New Zealand after he left St. Anne's in Cape Breton. So this cookbook encompasses not only the, the ladies that put the recipes in from St. Anne's area, but they partnered with the New, their New Zealand uh, cousins and, and family that some people stayed and some people left. And uh, the Gaelic College is a great tribute to, to them and the story is amazing. But this recipe book, it does all the old, old Scottish recipes for things that I would dare not try. But um, just amazing. Even making how to make soap and using the suet and all of that stuff. And beautiful, a piece of history. Uh, it's certainly not available anymore. So you can see the consistency of this is really nice. Coming together really nice. This reminds me of um, the, the, the texture of rolled, the rolled oats. Uh, when you're making the oat cakes and you have the rolled oats and that, it's similar consistency. It's beautiful. So I think it's pretty well ready there. So I'm going to take my pan right here 
and uh, hopefully you can see that. And I'm just going to kind of divide this in half. All right, just spread it out over the base. And just, I'm gonna press down, not too hard, with my fingers. Now Kathleen Boyle from Mabu, she makes delicious date squares as well. She actually made hers and I think she has a couple of secrets that she's not sharing because she makes extra special ones too. So Kathleen, feel free to comment and let people know anything that I am doing wrong. So at this point, uh, you would add the dates. And seriously, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna wash my hands and I'm going to bring the dates even at the temperature that they're at and put them on here and then put the topping on and then put them in the oven for 25 minutes. And actually 25 minutes in my oven is perfect. Okay, so I'm just gonna wash my hands, be right back. that's that it's quite it's just nice and warm it's perfect so I'm just gonna sp spoon big pieces in there now Mary O'Hanley I bet you made a lot of date squares in your day I know Mary I think if memory serves me correct I think she had eight children and she's just was a, a lovely a lovely baker made lots of goodies for her family according to her daughter and uh, Mary I'm so glad that you were there and listening and watching so now I'm just going to spread this out Actually, you can, you can smell the vanilla. For that little bit of vanilla, you can still smell it. And uh, smells really good. Spread it out evenly. I think that's great. All right. So now I'm going to put the topping on. I'm just going to spill it all in. I'm just gonna, you know, squash those little lumpy, more lumpier parts. And just dab it in. And you don't wanna squash it down too much, I don't think. Okay, so I'm just gonna pat it down. So there now, ready for the oven, 350 for 25 minutes. 
So while they're baking in the oven, I'm putting the kettle on, the quiet one, the one on top of the stove, so that it doesn't make too much noise. And I'm going to turn the camera around and we're going to go into the living room. I'm in an awful slant here, sorry people. <laughs> we'll get it straight one day. <laughs> but anyway, um, putting it in for 25 minutes and we'll have a few tunes from Pius and some conversation and a cup of tea. And Pius and I are going to enjoy a crispy crunch square when we have our tea because I won't be able to cut these. So when you take them out of the oven, um, you're going to, uh, the recommendation for many is to just, to um, leave it in the pan for quite a while till it's set, like three or four hours. So, and, uh, but if you're brave enough to take a piece while it's warm, that's up to you. I'm sure there's lots of cooks that do that too. So I'm putting it in the oven. I'll be right back. take you with me we're going to go and we're going to have a chat with Pius so Pius hello hi everyone how are you so let me tell you about Pius <laughs> see if I can set this little tripod up so that it works We won't make any sudden moves, Pius. No. <laughs> I'm a Pius moment. <laughs> so, Pius lives in Mabu, but he's formerly from Foot Cape, right? Yeah. And uh, from a very young age, he took a, a love to uh, the guitar. And uh, he's a much loved uh, accompanist to many fiddlers that will be playing for dances or you can find him in the concerts or you can hear him at the distillery. Does anybody play with you at the distillery? Well, Kevin's there tonight. Yeah. Who's Kevin? Kevin LeVay County plays. Oh, Kevin, Kevin LeVay Count. Oh, beautiful, beautiful player. And uh, they're actually playing tonight at the distillery, the Glenora Distillery. At what time? 8 to 10. From 8 until 10. So if you're close by and you're looking for some entertainment, like we all need these days, uh, you can hear oh, Pius there. <laughs> so P Pius has overcome many, you know, physical disabilities, right? Uh, over his lifetime. And he's managed to dance square sets and make people happy. And uh, I'm proud to call him my friend for many years. He's a blessing, and uh, uh, he, uh, he's, a, he's a good man. So I'm going to let him take it away to play a little bit of music, and I'm going to get our teacups ready. And then when he's finished a couple of sets there, or one set, uh, we'll have another little conversation, yep, and then sure. back for another set, and uh, the date squares might be done. So, Pius, can uh, I want to be able to see your guitar there? How's that? That's good. Okay, and I'll, I'm just gonna how to watch the comments. So okay. you go or go ahead.
you, Pius. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, Pius, uh, I don't know. I, I've, I've been telling Pius a little bit about tunes and wooden spoons and about all the wonderful people that have come into my life since this happened. And uh, really, they're, they're friends, all of you. And uh, I, uh, one such person that uh, I, I'm back and forth with frequently is Anne McComb in, in BC. And she, Anne has sent me many recipes that she has and shared with me for, for my use if I want to or whatever. But uh, what I've come to find out that she's also a beautiful uh, visual artist. And uh, she did a painting of, um, I guess, Santa Claus. And uh, look, it's almost like, a, almost like a Father Christmas. And she just sent me the picture and I was just like, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. So she sent me a print of her Santa Claus picture, or, or painting. And I just got it this week, and I was in Halifax last week, and I knew it was coming, so I got a, a 16 by 20 frame for it, but I want to show it to you. It's so pretty. I can't wait for Christmas. Look there. Can you see that, or is there too much light? Let's see. Look at that face. Isn't that gorgeous? Like I cannot wait to to show it. Sorry, I didn't see the, the 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 light reflection there, but I hope you got a, a good look at that. But she's so talented, and so many of you are. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, there's there's there there's that. The other thing that I wanted to uh, to talk about today before we hear more music from Pius is that. Um, uh, like I said, when I was talking about um, Mary O'Hanley, you know, just elderly people, I'm in that boat too, but elderly people are libraries and enriched with all of the, the stuff from our youth that we need to remember and know. And sometimes it's before we really appreciate our roots, those... Uh, little snippets of little gems uh, are gone. You know what I mean? And uh, why didn't I ask grandma this or mom that or whatever, and it's too late. Uh, but in keeping with that note, um, anybody who has roots in Mabu especially, um, you, you would, you know, if, if you were formerly from there, or your grandmother was from there or whatever, there is this book and you may have heard of this book, and it's called The Mabu Pioneers. It's the, 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 uh, the first one, I don't know when it was put out, maybe, God, 40s or 50s, I'm not even sure. And uh, I actually, just a minute, I have a copy on the table here. To get my information. Here. And of course, this, my, my, my phone, uh, everything is backwards, the printing and all that, but this is, this is the book. It is a, it's a big book with lots of information in it. If you were a Beaton or a McDonald or a whatever, a Campbell, a Cameron, this all of your roots of when the pioneers came over here from Scotland. And, um, so if you were someone who was actually wanting to get a copy of this, Sandy Publishing has just put it back and available again, and I don't know how many copies that they printed this time, but uh, there it's, it's $65 plus ta HST and um, shipping, of course. And uh, the, the, uh, the way, ha hope you have a pen. But if you're really, you can always write me and I'll give you that or I'll post this. But um, if you can remember this email, Sandy Group, S-A-N-D-Y, Sandy Group 
at ns.sampatico.ca or you can call 1-877-726-3947 or you can just replay this video, this feed and get that information. But uh, they will ship it anywhere that you are if you are interested in that. And I know there's a lot of Cape Bretoners but uh, with connections to Mabu uh, because this really focuses on, on the Mabu. Uh, pioneers that came here but of course they've spread out to different places as well so uh just a very cherished book in my house i can tell you that and it's always on the top shelf with all my special uh books that are precious to me and uh that is one thing and after Pius finishes this next tune, we'll have tea, but I want to tell you about another book that I'm really excited about to share with you for children. So, uh, Pius, if you'd take it yeah. away for another number, I'll get our tea. Yeah, sure. Okay. Sure. over beside you. Yeah. You can put your guitar down. Okay. Well, I'll show you what we're serving to Pius. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you might remember these. The crispy crunch squares, those little chocolate morsels. Mm -hmm. They make a whole bunch. But anyway, I made some for some people. I, do you know who I gave them to? I might as well tell you. You know how Cecil goes to the racetrack every Sunday? So every Sunday, these couple of ladies that go around selling the tickets, you know, kind of their mobile uh, uh, sellers of tickets. And uh, they're always saying they could never watch this show because they're always working at the racetrack, or whatever, selling the tickets. And teasing him about, well, you better, you know, get her to to give us something someday, whatever. So I made a big pan of these. And I don't know, I think I gave them four dozen over a couple of <laughs> containers and I sent them with him today to go to the track. So I'm sure there'll be some people getting a little morsel. And because I don't like date squares, this is what I'm serving Pius. And really the date squares would be too hot when you take them out of the oven. So Pius, Thank you, dear. there you go. And there's your tea and I'll go get my tea. And we still have some things to talk about and we still have another little bit of tunes to go before the the date squares are done and can be taken out of the oven but um i'll get my tea in a second here but i want to tell you about another book that i just recently got so way back in 1983 i went to scotland for the first time uh, to teach step dancing there on the isle of barra and uh, a lovely friend uh, Beverly Campbell, that was her name then, 
came with me. She was Beverly McCachran from Inverness, born and raised, and then she went to school in Malibu for a while and graduated and uh, went off to be a teacher, and then she married a cousin of mine, but he was tragically killed in an uh, industrial accident at our local pulp and paper mill um, in the early 80s. But anyway, she went with me to Inverness. But anyway, <laughs> to Scotland, to, to Barra. <laughs> but anyway, she went off to, uh, to uh, Alberta and uh, many years later, she remarried and had two beautiful children, a girl and a boy. I've, I've uh, seen their pictures and conversed with, the, with the, her daughter a couple of times because her and my daughter met and were friends. But uh, Beverly was a, a school teacher and just really into uh, one of those teachers that you want your children to have. I, and I know that that's just the way she is and was, but she just retired recently. And so she wrote a book, a, a children's book. You can't, it, it's, it's, oh, Millie, so silly. And uh, it's just, I read it today and I can't wait. Uh, some of my grandchildren are coming over uh, after. And this was just about a stray cat that she ended up taking in, but it's a rhyming book and it's just so well and done with a teacher's um, focus as well and the rhyming and the, the, the education behind it about being kind to animals. And uh, Millie, of course, is the, this, this stray cat that just came into their home and into their hearts. And uh, so it's it's got early literacy strategies incorporated into that and uh it it tells you how uh, you know if you're reading a book to the child how you should follow along with your fingers and the children can relate to the words you know that you're you're doing that whole eye ear voice matching you know just a, a great little add on to the book and um I suppose, you know, if anybody was interested, she lives in Alberta, but I'm pretty sure, well, her contact information is in there, but her card is here. So her name is um, Beverly Hagen, H-A-G-E-N, and she's on Facebook. Her Facebook page is just, you search for, oh, Millie, so silly. Oh, Millie, that's O H. M-I-L-L-Y, so silly, all one word, and you'll find it. And I know that she uh, she do e-transfers and we'll, we'll get it out to you in the, the uh, best way possible. But she's, uh, I'm sure there's more books coming from her. So I just wanted to highlight that because she never asked me to do that, but I had, when I heard that she had done this, I wanted one for myself. So I, uh, I hope that maybe if there's somebody out there that loves children's books, it's, it's really geared, I think, um, for four to seven year old children, or maybe it's three to seven, you know, it depends on where you are. Three to seven. That's, uh, and there's the real Millie is on there with Beverly on the back cover. Just love that. How are the squares, go, guys? Go, go. They're good. <laughs> That's good. But anyway, that that is that. And uh, I also wanted to tell you. Oh yeah, this is something exciting for me. You know how you? I used to love. Every now and again, having a home party and getting all your friends in, you know, whether it was Tupperware or Mary Kay or all of those things. Uh, throughout my married life, I loved to be there and, you know, and, and invite your friends. And when Tammy was having Pamper Chef parties, I loved all of that. So anyway, I have an opportunity to do that again. And Anybody who, who is not my friend on my own personal Facebook page, but my it's set to um, to public anyway. But I'm having this Zaya uh, party this week, starting today right up until Thursday. But it's leisure wear, comfy wear, athletic wear, 
lovely stuff, amazing quality. And if, if you're looking for something like that, you know, just, I don't know, sometimes we're just not going out and going to the mall or shopping and we're a little cautious and there's still so many places. But if you are if you like that kind of thing and, and you want to have it a go, could be on my party if you want. <laughs> but really, really nice. And the reason that this party, that I went for this party especially, and it's an online party, right, is the, the, the lady the gal that's doing it her name is Teresa Renton and she lives in Ontario but she's a very special person to me because her mother Teresa was formerly from here in Port Hood but her mom Marjorie was one of my absolutely best friends and she passed away she's one of my two special friends that passed away this year and she died in January so Teresa is very special in my heart. And if I can do something for Teresa and for Marjorie, this is it. So I want her to have a good party. So if any of that interests you, their, their, their prices are not that bad if you're looking for the good quality. Oh my gosh, there's my phone. It's probably my brother. I always try to um, t uh, turn off my, my phone and unplug it before the show starts. And I forgot to if you can grab your guitar and play the tune and I'll go see who that is. Uh, bias. Thank you. Mm. Pardon me. Sorry, that was my niece calling from Ontario, so I'll have to call her back. So um, she's not watching Tunes and Wooden Spoons, or she'd know. <laughs> but anyway, Pius, how many places have you played this summer? It's in the distillery. You played at the distillery, and was that pretty regularly, like every week? Oh, yeah. Every week. Yeah, well, so, I, I, sorry, Wednesday and Sundays. Wednesdays and Sundays. Yeah. And, uh, you know, aren't you lucky to be able to I do know, that, I you know? It. I love and, it. And you, you do love that. Pius lives in Mabu at the, at the seniors' complex yeah. there, has his own little apartment there, and he's playing the guitar from sunup to sundown. And I love it. And he plays a little fiddle too, mandolin. and he does a mandolin, and he sings a little break bit, dance. and break the dance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's he's bad. He's bad, fella. I learned from the best. <laughs> Just don't. I, I can't tell you the story, but oh, no, no. never gonna have a cup of tea at Pius's house. But he knows why. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We're not going to tell you that story. Some niece will say it pretty well. <laughs> I don't know who it is. Oh, God bless you, Pius. Oh, Pius, honest to God, everybody needs a Pius in their life. He really does. There's every, only one. every, <laughs> there's only one. Every day, if I open Facebook, there's a little message there. Good morning, Mary Janet. Have a wonderful day. I love you. Now, how beautiful is that? And you know what? There's some days that I don't get to it till the evening. I might not open Facebook till the evening. And I feel so bad. Then I said, oh, my God. I'll write him back. Sometimes I forget. But anyway, he brings lots of joy to very many people. And he's very good uncle. I know that for sure. There's our oven. 
I'm going to go check it out. Pius, if you could just yeah, take it, t take it one more t short tune, sure. and uh, I'll bring them the squares to see. Ain't real. See it ain't real. All right. So I want to say a huge thank you, Pius. Thank you so oh, much. Welcome, I really appreciate. Uh, he's always so generous with his time and his talents. And uh, I'm just going to take you into the kitchen. But before I, uh, I'll show you, here is the, the finished product. Looks pretty pretty nice and brown and around the edges. And I'm just gonna leave it there untouched. They should stay there for, like I said before, a few hours to be sure that they're nice and set. And that's the beauty of the parchment papers that you can kind of lift it out uh, when the time comes, when they've set and sat in, in the pan. And then I put them on the cooling rack. And then, you know what? A pizza cutter would cut it just perfect if you if you want to use that so next weekend is thanksgiving weekend and i'm not exactly sure how i'm going to handle this yet um i am making uh, for dessert for thanksgiving <coughs> dinner excuse me i am making a small cheesecake uh, little mini cheesecakes with a little bit of caramel on the top or i'm going to make a, a big a big cheesecake same kind and with the caramel on top. I haven't decided which, but I'm all, I always like to have a choice, but I'm also going to be making um, sticky toffee pudding and it's in a nine by 13 inch pan with uh, the sauce on it. And by, by next week and I'll remember <laughs> who it was that gave me the lovely recipe, uh, but, so, but I'll be doing that. So depending on what you want to have next weekend or, you know, Whatever you, whatever you choose to make, if you want to make it, you might have your own Thanksgiving plans. Um, but you'll need dates for the sticky toffee pudding, uh, plus, you know, your regular brown sugar and flour and whatever. And I'll try to put something up maybe on Tuesday or Wednesday uh, to tell you what it is I'm making. And for the cheesecake, well, you're going to need two packs of cream cheese. And I like the, the, um, the good the good kind, you know what kind that is. Uh, so you're making something special like that. So with the cream cheese, of course, you're gonna need eggs and uh, um, sugar, white sugar. And for the sauce, I think you're gonna need, uh, it starts with a white sugar that you're going to brown and then add butter to, and then add cream to. So you're gonna have to have cream. But I'll put that in a post. And But the thing that I wanted to say is that I don't know if I'm go doing it live next Sunday. I may record it, because there could be a plan that we're going to be having uh, Thanksgiving dinner on Saturday evening to accommodate some that are going to be home for Thanksgiving weekend. So in order to have the dessert with my meal, I would have to do it on Saturday and Anyway, I will let you know in one way or the other, there'll be something on, on the Facebook page next Sunday at 2. So um, I think that's everything that I wanted to say today. So thank you so much for joining me and for always being here with me. And uh, 
Have a wonderful week, and uh, I hope you have lots of family joining you for Thanksgiving next weekend. Um, just looking at some, I, I'm just now noticing the, the notes rolling up there. Darlene McDonald Johnston, hi there, Darlene, thank you. And Karen Santacona, she loves both. Annie Goodyear, hi, you're watching. Tracy McGuire, if I have to have cream. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. And Marlene Balcom, thank you so much. So many people to say hello to. I love every one of you, and I, I read every comment if I can get the chance. So, um, hi, Clory McLean and Tina, formerly from Abu. How are you? Okay, people, have a joyous week. Remember to love everyone and know that I love you and you've made such a beautiful impact on my life. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.